creating a live broadcast. Mm -hmm. I think my son is coming out of bed. Okay. We are live. This is Ellen Tave from Juniper and Oaks and Helen Wilkinson from Sunflower Cottage Crochet. How are you yes. doing, Helen? I'm doing really well, thank you. I was just saying it's really nice to be able to speak to you in person because we've only really communicated over the computer for a little while. <laughs> it's true. I know we've been we've been good crochet friends over Instagram and Facebook. And mm -hmm. You've been such a help with this um, with this cow, and I really appreciate it. And yeah, putting a, a voice to the face to the name is just is really cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I know this is your group, but I have the pleasure of interviewing you today. So would yes. you like to tell us a little bit about your crochet background and your business? Because I know you've had a few new members join the group because of the cow. Yes. It, yeah, it's been a, a success so far, people joining the group. And I, I'm so excited that people are, are on board. And they're, um, so my crochet background, okay, I have been crocheting for more than 20 years. Um, I was one of those my mom taught me when I was like eight years old. And um, I would forget and then kind of learn again. And um, then in high school, my friend Katie, she started a little crochet group um you know just a couple of high schoolers crocheting together and we got quite a few people on board um and then that moved to college just making blankets and hats and um yeah we made a bunch of hats for cancer patients and then that's kind of what I did I did blankets and scarves and hats and um then after I uh graduated college I thought you know there's definitely a lot more out there I dabbled in amigurumi a little bit which I don't really love um yeah. you know there's just something about it <laughs> uh, and then you know just fulfilling orders for people who'd be like oh hey can you make a blanket like this for me or can you make me a hat and then I designed a couple patterns and never wrote anything down I um I recently published those patterns um that I came up with like 10 years ago a cozy cabled ear warmer and then a cabled hat um you know, I was coming up with my own patterns and I thought, oh, that's so just fun just to be able to create something out of nothing. And then also, once I finally wrote them down and got them out there, um, have people make something that I invented. And I think that's just really fun. So now, uh, about two years ago, um, I started Juniper and Oaks um, as just an official business and have been you know, doing a few like custom orders, but mostly designing things and um, cozy handmade home decor is what I'm, is what I've been all about. Excellent. I have to say that I do love your hearts in the basket and your Georgia wall hangings. They're really pretty. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, just stuff that I dream up and then it's like, oh wow, that actually, that actually happened. <laughs> No, I think I'm definitely going to get that heart in a basket pattern though. So if anybody here hasn't checked out Erin's shop yet, go and sure. have a look because that one, I'm really quite taken with that one. So Thank you. Good. Yeah, it's called heart in the basket there while hanging with using the basket weave stitch. Wait, basket weave stitch. Basket weave stitch. And um, yeah, it's available on Etsy and Ravelry. Uh -huh. So is that what you think your niche is? The home decor side of things yeah is that what you think more yeah that's what i'm focusing on is um you know i i think that your home should be you know comfy make you feel at ease um so i designed these crochet pieces that um yeah make you feel at home and kind of invite conversation they're a little bit you know they're not just plain and simple plain jane it's um, more intricate and detailed pieces um, that you know people will look at and be like oh this is very unique and like what's the story behind it mm -hmm. so do you think you um, cater for a specific co level of crochet would you, would your patterns be suitable for beginners or intermediates so they're a little bit you know more complicated um, it's not just 
single crochet, double crochet. There's the bobble stitches thrown in there and um, cables and kind of similar to this cow, like it's corner to corner, but it's, you know, a lot of color work. So it is a little bit more advanced, but I've been told by my testers and everything, like the way that I write my patterns is like for a beginner, like, like I walk you through how to do it and there's videos and pictures to go along with. So, um, mm -hmm. so that once you, you know, get like the single crochet, double crochet, um, you know, get those stitches mastered, like, yeah, you can definitely pick this up and do my Excellent. Lovely. Patterns. For this cow that you dreamed of with the sandy feel, and I've done my square ready. Oh, look uh, at you, yeah. It's, it's really pretty. I love it. There's a smaller than mine. <laughs> oh, it's fab. Um, so it's all about Christmas. You're looking you're looking forward to Christmas. Do you have any Christmas traditions or anything that you particularly love doing for the festive season? Yes. So um, biggest tradition I've had, like even since I was a little kid, was we've always chopped down our own Christmas tree. Um, growing up, I lived more in the woods where there are um, pine trees to cut down. Now I live with my family in East Tennessee and it's more like Christmas tree farms that you go and chop down but that's a big one chop down the tree and then just as a family decorating the Christmas tree and getting out all the decorations and um, putting those up as a family and that's like a big inspiration behind this cow is um, decorating for Christmas like whenever my mom would bring out the Christmas decorations it was like always a fight like who got to like put together the nativity scene and who got to put up like the little elves like we had the elf on the shelf before elf on the shelf was like really popular you know we had a, a whole bunch of those those Scandinavian elves like everywhere um, put them up in the trees and um so that's you know now that I'm a mom and I have three kids and a lot of my decorations are just kind of like blah 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 like whatever I want to like curate those nostalgic feelings um, in my kids where it's like these are the pieces that you know the family will just reach for every year um, so kind of these heirloom pieces and that's why I um, you know came up with this this blanket this cow is I have something special that mom made that you know we'll just reach for year mm -hmm. after year and the it as well or, or more yeah <laughs> exactly. And even now, like they can see that I'm making it. I have four of the squares done and it's kind of like, what are you going to make next? And like, oh, I love this square and I love that one. And you should do this one next. And just like seeing like their eyes light up already before it's even made is like, this is the goal and I'm doing it. <laughs> yes, I've got the ebook and you did a very beautiful job with it. I'm really impressed with it. And I too have done four of the squares already. I'm just so excited about this one. <laughs> that's so good I am blown away by the excitement like I thought like oh yeah a few people would jump on board but um mm -hmm. I think you know there are corner to corner Christmas blankets but I think the design I came up you know that everyone came up with it yeah it's just unique and and fun and I think the yeah. Nordic has been quite inspirational this year for a lot of people well look at me just on trend <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely um, i uh your... i was um looking down and i'm like hey here's my socks i'm wearing but there's like a nordic star on my socks excellent there we go there's definitely a theme running there this year it so is, what's your yeah. favorite thing to crochet for the holidays i I would say blankets. I just love making blankets um, for the most part, except for like something like this. It's a mindless thing that you can do like while cozying up, um, you know, with a cup of tea and watching a movie or something where you can just do the same things over and over again. Um, my son just came out. Where's the phone? <laughs> you Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, go back to bed. 
Oh, I'm on a call. Okay. I'll come and get you. <laughs> he's um he's he's five, so the nap time thing is like hit and miss, right? Yeah. He's on he's on fall break. That's all right. It's always when you don't want them to get up. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> um so you've already given us a peek at your square. Yeah. What have you called this square? What have I called it? Huh. Yeah, it's the Nordic star. Um, it's always funny. It looks like a star, looks like a snowflake. Mm -hmm. uh, but just the pretty traditional. Um, I just wanted to, this is the inspiration behind, you know, the whole project is um, mm -hmm. just seeing this image a lot growing up, um, as well as other like Scandinavian themes. So just wanted to put this one out here first with the bang with yes. the Nordic star. Yes, and it's a great one to start with. So have you, you know, ever designed or crocheted a project like this before? I, I, what got me into Corner Corner, you know, C2C crochet was divine debris every year does. Um, her name is Amber. She does a year-long cow just on her blog um there was like a coffee theme and then this year i started doing her plant theme and that's kind of what got me into it um but this is kind of the first time i'm i kind of put that down and started doing on my own crochet projects and thought okay i need to design my own c2c so i did my monstera leaf afghan but this is like my first real cal that i've really been involved in on this level as well as i've never really hosted anything like this before so um it's kind of all new and trying to figure out all the moving pieces but it's been just so fun yes you're doing a great job you wouldn't know it was your first one <laughs> <laughs> thank you so um you've expressed that you love your your christmas patterns and your corn at corn and what else have you got planned going forward towards Christmas, other than obviously this fantastic car. Yes. Um, let's see. I have a few patterns that I, you know, I've worked up and that the patterns are coming out pretty soon. I have a little um, floor poof that will be perfect as a, you know, as a, as a Christmas gift. So that's going to be coming out in the 12 weeks of Christmas um, by me and my hook. And then I also have another Christmas blanket coming out. I'm trying to like, I think it's in a different room, but I have another Christmas blanket coming out that's using the moss stitch. Um, and that'll come out just before Christmas in December. Mm. Um, so that is seems yeah. to be popular this year. Yes, the moss stitch is, it's, I'm new to it, but yeah, I'm seeing it everywhere as I'm, like starting to publish I'm like oh my goodness this is again mm. on trip once again okay um, um, because you've had quite a few new followers would you like to explain um where the best places that can find you is if they want to check out your patterns find yes out more about I, I would say the best place especially after yesterday when we found out you know social media is going down like nobody can get on Facebook or Instagram um, I would probably direct everyone to there, but I would say my my website juniperandoaks.com is like kind of the central hub where you can find everything. You can sign up for my newsletter and um, every pattern that I publish, whether if it's a free pattern or a paid pattern, you can access it from my website. And I do like to talk a little bit about each pattern there as well. So I would say, yeah, juniperandoaks.com but you can find me on most of the socials with the same, you know, tag at Juniper and Oaks. So, um, yeah, find me there. And I, I mostly post pictures on Instagram. Um, and I have a TikTok, but yeah, JuniperandOaks.com is, is where I am. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. For letting me interview you it's been an absolute pleasure and also for letting me be i'm so thrilled 
Helen, did you, let me see the back side of your work. Did you weave in your ends? Yes, I have. See, you're better than me because look at mine. <laughs> oh. I'm like, and I'm going to throw that out, this out there. Like, you know, there's a giveaway if you post your finished product, your finished blanket by the end, um, like your entity will win this giveaway. But um, your ends don't have to be weaved in because I don't know if mine will be. <laughs> Yes, I used to test a lot of corner to corner patterns for a designer and whenever I took the official photos I always made sure the ends were on one side so I could lie it on the carpet and nobody would see them. Nobody, nobody knows, I mean unless you're watching my live video but. <laughs> Lovely, well thank you very much Erin, it's been a pleasure. Yes, thank you Helen, we'll talk to you later. Okay darling. Bye everybody. Bye.